Hello, I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. How is everyone doing? Hope Memorial Day weekend was great to you all. It was to me. Um, so, to be honest, not a ton going on. You know, I mean, the, the league is kind of shut down for Memorial Day weekend. Not a ton of action there. I, I found two articles I wanted to discuss. Tomorrow will be the mailbag. That's been really popular, and you guys have done a great job of giving me great topics to talk about. So start sending those in. I'll put a tweet out as well, at Williamson NFL. Um, but the Touchdown Wire, they do good work, Doug Farrar. They did a most underrated player on every team. And Alex Highsmith was their Steeler um, selection. And basically, everyone knows he's good, I think. You know, but... I think he gets overshadowed by Watt. I think that there are some folks that think that the Steelers overpaid for him. Maybe some of you listening think that. I've heard things along the lines of they should trade Highsmith for a wide receiver. You know, get get out from that contract. You know, get turn him into something. Give Herbig that full time rule role. First off, I don't know that Herbig's a full-time player. I mean, you guys have not had the, some of you have, some of you haven't, had the luxury of walking past these human beings. I mean, Highsmith's a lot bigger, a lot thicker, a lot stronger. And I think Herbig could be a great breakout number three. And frankly, I think I've told you, I'd, I'd like to bring back a guy like Golden, too, as the three slash four. But I don't know that any of those guys are every down players. And Highsmith truly was. So I like I like the write up. I'm going to read that to you now. the The Steelers have been light. The Steelers have never been light on great edge rushers over the past few decades, and they're very good at getting guys who float around under the radar to show up big in the NFL, despite their humble beginnings. Highsmith, selected in the third round of the 2020 draft out of Charlotte, is an ex- outstanding example. He had two sacks and 21 total pressures on just 221 pass rushing reps as a rookie campaign. Then his playing time increased. So did his productivity. In a way, if you remember, okay, I'm going away from the the write-up now. His his rookie year wasn't all that different than Herbig's, you know? I mean, just think about that. Then Highsmith's 2022 season, when he had 15 sacks and 55 total pressures and saw no drop-off when the injured TJ Watt wasn't on the field to help him out, had the Steelers rewarding him with a four-year, $68 million contract, with just over $17 million fully guaranteed. That year, folks, 26 of Highsmith's 55 pressures in 2022 came with Watt off the field. And four years, $68 million, when you look at the contracts around the league and how they're ballooning, is not bad, folks. So what did Highsmith do with that? He had the best season of his career after he got the money, which is always nice. In 2023, Highsmith had eight sacks and 72 total pressures, with Watt taking some of those sacks for himself. Get used to this underrated star getting to the quarterback more often than not. 72 pressures. We talked a little bit about pressures yesterday, side note. Eight sacks. I mean, if he's going to be between, you know, eight and 12 sacks a year with 55 to 75 total pressures, it's kind of a steal at four million sixty-eight or four year sixty-eight million. So I just don't know that everyone appreciates him around here enough. I mean, he's a really good player. Bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season, from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Another one I dug up. Again, there's not a ton of stuff out there to talk about. But Pro Football Focus ranked their best running backs in the league. And one of them, you know, Warren and Harris both made the list. I thought was too low, and that was Jalen Warren. They ranked him as the 19th best running back in the league. And here's what they said about him. 
Warren has curved, carved out a significant role for himself in the Steelers' offense, providing more dynamicism compared to Najee Harris's bruiser style of play. Warren earned a 78.6 grade in 2023, rushing 149 times for 100, 784 yards and four touchdowns at 5.3 yards per carry, which is fourth best in the NFL, by the way. Warren forced 0.35 missed tackles per attempt, the highest rate in the NFL, and his total missed tackle number of 56 was the seventh highest in the league. So they have him ahead of DeAndre Swift, which I agree with, behind Devon A. Chain, which a Chan, who frankly I would also have higher and is a really difficult one to rank. So I'm kind of going to avoid that one. But they have him behind James Conner, good year, behind Kyron Williams, really good year. But I do think if Warren were given Williams' situation, he would have done every bit of that. Has him behind Pacheco. I don't get that. Behind Pollard after a bad year. Behind Mostert. I really think Warren is a borderline top 12 type running back. Now, Harris isn't far behind, which might not shock you. Um, In between them, Warren is 19. Swift is 20. Alvin Kamara is 21. He did nothing as a ball carrier last year. I, I don't understand that at all. But he was a very reliable dump off high volume receiver and then Najee's at 22 David Montgomery James Cook Ramondre Stevenson behind him so these are good players you know it's not like wow how could you have this this guy stinks he should never be in this group but I like what they wrote about Najee Harris continued his streak of rushing for over a thousand yards each season and while he averaged just 4.1 yards per carry it was a career high for the former first round pick His 78.1 grade, which ranked 15th around running backs, was also a career best mark. As Harris's workload has dropped, his efficiency has risen. When his workload has dropped, his efficiency has risen. I think that's really important to keep in mind here. He averaged more yards after contact per attempt, more missed tackles forced per attempt, and more explosive runs per game than ever before. So you're getting better carries out of them, more missed tackles per attempt, more yards after contact per attempt, more explosive runs per attempt, per, per game. Now, I think his blocking was a little better last year and you know the scheme started to really come around. But I said this often, you know, probably quite a bit on these airwaves. I thought last year was Najee's best year on tape, you know, all around. Didn't catch as many balls when Ben dumped it to him a thousand times a game but he's still a very capable receiver. It's a really good one-two backfield, and I think they have it right where they want it at the moment. So just thought that'd be something to throw out. Tomorrow's a mailbag. Get those questions in over and out.